Welcome to the Active Filter Series. This video shows what I think is a better way to design infinite gain multiple feedback active filters. In 1979, I had a reason to design an active filter, so I went out and bought the Active Filter Handbook by Frank Tedeschi. The book was well done and gave methods in a cookbook fashion. However, there were a lot of steps involved. The denominator of the transfer function is a quadratic, so the quadratic formula was used to solve for the first conductance. But it requires you to fiddle around with the value of C1 to prevent a negative under the radical. It solved for normalized conductances, and then it used the typical filter design method to do denormalization using an impedance scaling factor and a frequency scaling factor. But I'm about to show you an easier way that doesn't require denormalization. For these active filter designs, a specific capacitor is chosen first. I made the solemn key component selection video to select the just right component values based on frequency. It featured geometric mean component values. For resistors, it was 4 times 10 to the 5th ohms per square root hertz. For capacitors, it was 4 times 10 to the minus 7th farads per square root hertz. We will only use the capacitor geometric mean here. Here's an example of a capacitor value for a 20 hertz high pass filter, which comes out to 0 0.089 microfarad. Here's an example of a 1 megahertz low pass filter, which comes out to 400 picofarad. I made the infinite gain multiple feedback general transfer function video. A generalized transfer function was derived based on the multiple feedback topology. I then went on to derive the specific transfer functions for the low pass, high pass, and band pass configurations. Shown here is the low pass configuration and its transfer function. There's more to design the active filter than just component selection. The op amp used must be able to have an adequate slew rate and gain bandwidth. In the slew rate limitations video, I derived the equation for the slew rate here in volts per second. Since most data sheets show the slew rate in volts per microsecond, I multiply it by 10 to the minus sixth. A typical practice in active filters is to choose an op amp for the gain bandwidth that's 100 times greater than the required noise gain bandwidth product. The infinite gain multiple feedback topology uses an inverting amplifier configuration. The noise gain is the inverting gain of the filter plus 1. So for an inverting gain of 10, the noise gain is 11. Here's the low pass transfer function. One thing I'll add here is the gain, A. Here is the low pass configuration. Now let's move along to design an infinite gain multiple feedback active low pass filter. Here's our requirements. A cutoff frequency of 1 kHz and the gain A is 1 volt per volt, a Q of 0 0.707 which is consistent with a Butterworth response which is maximally flat in the pass bound. And there's an input voltage of 1 volt RMS. The first step is to select C5. We use that geometric mean capacitance. The variable C5 scale allows you to tweak the value a little. That can range from 0.2 to 5. I'm going to keep that at 1 for these examples. Solving for C5 gives us 0.0126 microfarads. The closest E24 series is 0.012 microfarads. The constant alpha is used as 1 over Q. In this case, it comes out to 1.414. The constant K is 2 pi times the cutoff frequency times C5. That comes out to 75.398 times 10 to the minus 6 power. The formula for C2 is 4 over alpha squared times A plus 1 times C5. That comes out to 0 0.048 microfarads. The closest standard E24 value is 0 0.047 microfarads. The formula for R1 is alpha over 2AK, which comes out to 9.378K. Closest E96 series value is 9.31K. 
the equation for R3 is alpha over 2 times A plus 1 times K. That comes out to 4.689K. The closest standard E96 value is 4.64K. The formula for R4 is simply alpha over 2K. That comes out to 9.378K. The closest E96 value is 9.31K. The peak output voltage is the gain times the input voltage times the square root of 2. And that comes out to 1.414 volts. Here's the slew rate formula in volts per microsecond. That yields 0 0.00444 volts per microsecond. Here's the equation for gain bandwidth. That yields a gain bandwidth required of 200 kilohertz. Here's the schematic with the selected components. Here's the magnitude plot. Since it's a two-pole filter, the gain rolls off at 40 dB per decade. Here's the phase plot. It goes from 0 to minus 180 degrees. Now let's move along to the high-pass version. Here's the transfer function, and here's the high-pass circuit configuration. The requirements are a corner frequency of 1 kHz, the gain A is 1, the Q is 0 0.707, again consistent with Butterworth response, the input voltage is 1 volt RMS, and the maximum frequency that is to be output is 20 kHz. First, we select C1, scaled to 1, that yields 0 0.0126 microfarads. The closest E24 series value is 0 0.012 microfarads. Again, alpha is 1 over Q, which gives us 1.414. K is 2 pi times the cutoff frequency times C1. That gives us 75.398 times 10 to the minus 6th. C3 is equal to C1 at 0 0.012 microfarads. The equation for C4 is C1 over A, which yields 0 0.012 microfarads. The equation for R2 is alpha over K times 2 plus 1 over A. That gives us 6.252K. The closest C96 series value is 6.19K. R5 equals A times 2 plus 1 over A over alpha K. R5 comes out to 28.135K. The closest E96 series value is 28.0K. Again, the output voltage peak is 1.414 volts. This time, the slew rate is calculated using the max frequency, F max, which is 20 kilohertz, and comes out to be 0 0.0889 volts per microsecond. This time, the gain bandwidth is based on the maximum frequency, F max, which is 20 kilohertz, and comes out to 4 megahertz. Here's the schematic with the selected components. Here's the magnitude plot. Again, it's a two pole filter so the gain rolls off at 40 dB per decade going towards DC. Here's the phase plot. It goes from 180 to zero degrees. Now let's move along to the bandpass version. Here's the transfer function, and here's the bandpass circuit configuration. The requirements are a center frequency F0 of one kilohertz, the gain A0 is 1, the Q is 20, and the input voltage is 1 volt RMS. First we select C3 scaled to 1. That yields 0 0.0126 microfarads. The closest E24 series value is 0 0.012 microfarads. K is 2 pi times the center frequency times C3. That gives us 75.398 times 10 to the minus 6. C4 is equal to C3 at 0.012 microfarads. The constant H is A0 over Q. That yields an H of 0.05. The equation for R1 is 1 over HK. That gives us 265.5K. The closest E96 series value is 267K. The equation for R2 is 1 over K 
times 2Q minus H. That gives us 331.99 ohms. The closest E96 series value is 332 ohms. The equation for R5 is 2Q over K. That yields 530.516K. The closest E96 series value is 536K. Once again, the peak output voltage is 1.414 volts. The slew rate is based on the center frequency F0, which gives us a 0 0.00444 volts per microsecond. The gain bandwidth is also based on center frequency F0, which is 200 kilohertz. Here's the schematic with the selected components. Here's the magnitude plot, and here's the phase plot. It goes from plus 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees. This is obviously easier done with a spreadsheet, so up next will be the spreadsheets for these calculations. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.